phone rung. I'm sitting there looking at the TV. So my mom said, look like I said, well, mom's calling. So I picked the phone up and um, and it wasn't sounding right. So she then she said, she call her gone. So, you know, I'm saying gone, you know, gone where, you know, and uh, and she said, uh, she dead. I said, dead how? And she said, alcohol poison. So when she said alcohol, I said, how she got alcohol poison? Where's she at? So she said, Mexico Cabo. So, you know, the phone just, you know, my phone dropped and I just started crying. I'm, and then, you know, I'm trying to figure out who she was over there with, you know, you know. Um, said she was over there with some friends that she went to school with, went to, went to Salem with. So I said, you know of them? You, you know them? You know, she said, I know of them. I just know she went to school with them. So, you know, from there, you know, my whole night was just trauma, man. I just cried all that night. I mean, this information came directly from someone who is friends with Dejanay's mother. And this information was communicated because people were upset about the fact that only one angle is being showed. And that is Dejanay assaulting your daughter this was not a fight this was a brutal assault yeah you know i heard the same thing you heard there's a video out there yeah that um you know she picked up by the neck and slammed on the ground and once they slammed her she didn't get back up she did not get back up mm. so i guess that that slam right there must have broke her dick in a final cord so he was the last one. Um, something about he was the last one. He was the last one. He was the last one about her breathing or something, you know. So when I got there, she was in the game room. Um, they told me um, she was not feeling good, so I instantly go to her, um, put on her side, get a bag, and all that. So I'm sitting right next to her the whole time. I was crossing my heart and hope that I. He playing soft music and rubbing her head. Really, you know, you saw the bruises. You saw the bruises. You came in the house. You want to sit there and say you played music, rub her head, and you know, then she took a last breath. You left. You saw the music. I mean, come on, man, really? You should have came in that house. Hey, y'all, y'all ain't going nowhere. Y'all stand down here. Y'all stand down here. Y'all not going back. Y'all not back going to the United States. I didn't came in here and saw these bruises. Y'all didn't hurt this girl. No. Y'all ever think? Y'all ever thought that she got a mother and a father? You got people back here in the states that love her and care about her. Should have did more than what you did. You trust and believe me, every last one of y'all. Y'all would have stayed there at that hospital down there with my daughter. I would have made sure y'all got back here. You wouldn't have been standing in no Mexico. Would've that would have meant a whole lot to me, uh, knowing that you stayed down there with my daughter till I got there or we got there. Which I know it wasn't the God that led me to her. So me and my brother got on that phone and started Googling all the funeral homes that was over in Mexico, Cabo. So we um, came up to funeral home, Riviera funeral home over there. And first we called, uh, a guy answered the phone. He didn't speak English. So we called back again. And another young lady um, answered the phone. And her name was um, Elizabeth. And from that point on, she said, I asked her, you have St. Cola Robinson um, over there? She said, yes, sir. Dr. Miss Robinson, I'm sorry for your loss. Said, Mr. Robbins, I'm gonna stick with you until I get your daughter back to the state. That lady was like an angel. Uh, after I wired the money, they got the body, so did the paperwork, and I take a while for that paperwork to get done because they transfer everything over into England. Yeah. So she got back here Thursday, last Thursday, around about five o'clock. So I'm sitting there in the funeral home. As soon as that door opened and that box came in there with her in it, man, you know. Mm. Just cried like a baby. Yeah. Didn't even want to leave out the funeral home. My brother had to pull me out of there. You know, I'm sitting here, you know, looking at her, seeing, you know, a knot on her head. My eyes swole. She got a lip, cut lip. And, you know, just, you know, that's a no, I know alcohol wasn't going to do all that. You know, so I said, something not adding up right here. And so y'all going to come back here to the States, bring her luggage back. Sit right there in her mom's, in her sister face, ate, told y'all story, how it happened, alcohol poison and all that. And then, you know, 
two or three days later, when the report came back, the lady told me, no, Mr. Brown, you and your daughter didn't die of no alcohol poison. She died, it was um, trauma, trauma to her neck and her spinal cord. It was broke. So that's when I just, I just had it. I said, no, no, I said, baby girl, your daddy is not gonna let you die in vain. I will get justice for you. And it's a shame, you know, for y'all men to be sitting in the room, the video I saw, yeah. for y'all men to be sitting in that room and y'all let this go on and do nothing. And Khalid, you're supposed to be her best five for five years. And y'all supposed to be friends. Yeah. Your friends just don't do that. No, nah, Khalid never called whatsoever. You know, and what his mom was telling me, you know, he'll come over to the house. I guess he was coming over to see what kind of information they knew. But once I found the information out, that's how they found the information was through me that she had a broken neck and a broken spinal cord trauma. Right. That's right. how they got the information was through me. And then once they came, when I called and sent what happened, what happened, then he was over there. Then all of a sudden, from what they told me, he got all sick and wasn't feeling good and say his aunt was with him or his mama was with him. And he wanted to leave. And when he left, they ain't heard no more from him, you know? So, um, and then when I saw the video for y'all to beat her, knowing she's not a fighter for y'all to, I don't know if y'all woke up out of her sleeve to beat her naked like that. Well, why she was naked? For you men to, you know, to sit in that room and watch her, that girl hit on her like that while she was naked. Do y'all have sisters? Do y'all have a mother? What if someone show y'all the video like that? A man, uh, someone beating on your mother or beating on your sister naked. How would you feel? And she's not even defending herself because she, she's not a fighter. You already bigger than her. She ain't number, you know, fatigue don't weigh no more than about 120, 125 pounds. That's not her style. Her style is not a fighter. She wasn't raised like that. You know, I don't know nothing. I'm I'm just waiting on them. Yes, I'm in sir. the blind, just like everybody else in the blind. I just know God is moving. Mm -hmm. You know, he's moving at his own time. And I walk by faith, not by sight.